Um, so, well, the approach to analysis. Uh, first of all, we worked variable by variable and looked to see whether they were associated with WEM webs. So uh, we use linear regression models for um, continuous, when we've got the GHQ or WEM webs, the continuous GHQ, and a di a regression analysis when we, um, logistic regression when we were looking for dichotomized outcomes with the GHQ. And in every model, we were adjusting for socioeconomic confounders. I'll show you those in a sec. And then uh, the variables, the lifestyle variables that were associated at the 10% level, which is a pretty lenient level, um, we then put in a model together to say, okay, of those that were associated, which were the most important? And again, we were adjusting for socioeconomic factors. And then in the final denouement, with that big multivariate model, we bunged in the GHQ as well and said, okay, so how much of this association between this lifestyle factor and WEMWEBS is actually uh, um, a, a due to mental health problems as manifested by the GHQ? So those were the socioeconomic factors we took into account, and those were the response categories we used. When we did the univariable analyses with WEMWEBS of the outcome, uh, we got four factors. We got smoking, exercise, um, oily fish consumption, and fruit and vegetable consumption coming out as uh, associated with WEMWEBS. Uh, we didn't get alcohol consumption or the frequency of alcohol consumptions, and we didn't get sugar. Um, now, I, I am absolutely confident the reason we didn't get alcohol is because uh, of the way the, the variable was administered. Uh, we know extremely well that high levels of alcohol consumption are associated with mental health problems, and I wouldn't for one minute want you to run away <laughs> saying I proved anything different. Um, but the sugar one is perhaps more interesting. There is, um, I, I have done some work on obesity and well-being, and curiously, and contrary to what one might expect, um, people who are uh, overweight and obese tend to have slightly higher levels of well-being than people um, who are normal weight. And so there's something odd going on there um, that um, it doesn't really accord with the idea that people eat because they're stressed or because of their em emotional problems of some sort or another. Um, and that may be why we're getting that difference with the sugary foods. Um, so when we put all these, um, the, the, the factors that were associated at the 10% level, the lifestyle factors, into a model with the socioeconomic factors, long-standing illness, and age, um, if your age distribution is U-shaped like ours, you have to have a quadratic factor, and people who are very statistically minded will know all about that, but we don't really need to bother about it. Uh, what I put here is the F values, which is the kind of multivariate correlation. So the stronger the correlation, the stronger the association. And what I want you to see from this is it was the, the fruit and veg that were coming over most powerfully as predictive, uh, associated with well, WEM webs. Um, uh, it's important that this is cross-sectional data and people say, use the word predict in logistic regression and ordinary regression models but actually in epidemiological terms, it can mean something slightly different. So I will try and avoid it. Um, the oily fish came out as, with a significant at the 0.05 le le level, which is the, the lowest level. Uh, but exercise and smoking dropped out of the model. Now the exercise, I think there's measurement issues, but it is interesting that smoking um, wasn't correlated. Um, if everybody who didn't smoke ate healthily all the time, you would expect only one or the other to end up in the model. Um, but what's happening here is that this is the stronger predictor and it's taking a lot of the effect away from these others. So once again, I don't think I've proved and wouldn't want you to run away with the idea that um, smoking and mental health are unrelated. They are, you know, and people with mental illness have much higher smoking rates than people without. But in this model, um, that's what we got. Um, the long-standing illness was very highly correlated. Um, but what I wanted to show you was that, that economic activity, um, which is a very uh, powerful inequalities marker, uh, and one that we know is associated with well-being. But if we look at the F values, actually fruit and veg is more strongly associated with mental well-being than, um, than economic activity. Economic activity is negatively. In economic inactivity. So these are people who are not even seeking work. Um, they're retired um, or, off, uh, or, or permanently incapacitated. Um, 
and that's negatively correlated, but I, I haven't done those subtleties on that. Um, so th that was that model. If we look at the, what predicted, what, what was associated with the GHQ, um, we get the same uh, four variables coming out in the univariable analyses and not these ones. But you'll notice the p-values are slightly different and that when we go into the multivariable model with the GHQ, um, you will start uh, seeing uh, those differences coming through because it was smoking that was much the most predictive of the lifestyle variables uh, for mental health problems. That's very nice, really. <laughs> um, you know, it's the sort of, uh, you undertake these analyses and you've no idea what you're going to find, and then you find this pattern that really makes some sort of sense. Um, fruit and veg are coming through in this model a bit, uh, but they're not uh, anything like as strongly, and these two have dropped out. But once again, you can see, um, you know, the, if you look at um, people who are economically inactive, it's the same sort of order of magnitude as the lifestyle variables in terms of predicting um, uh, having an effect on, on mental health. So then, when we put into our WEMWEBS model, we put the GHQ, and we say, okay, so how do things change now? Well, um, the, the GHQ F is somewhere over here. Um, I, I <laughs> So I just put lots of little pluses here. I mean, they're bound to be because we know they're correlated at 0.7, so they're, they're going to be in this model. Um, but what is fascinating is that fruit and veg was, was and, and oily fish were both predicting um, uh, and associated with WEMWEBS at the same level they were with in the models without GHQ. So whatever is going on between uh, fruit and vegetable consumption and well-being um, is not accounted for by any relationship with mental illness. So what does all that tell us? Well, it, this is a cross-sectional survey and you can't really start imputing um, causation from cross-sectional surveys because you don't know whether people who are mentally well eat more fruit and veg because they're mentally well or they're mentally well because they eat more fruit and veg. You've got that chicken and egg situation and the only way to unravel that is to look in cross um, longitudinal data sets and indeed, as longitudinal data starts coming on board, that's what we will start doing. However, it really, it was interesting how strongly these variables came out. Um, and it's very interesting that they are entirely independent of either long-standing illness or the other lifestyle factors or the various socioeconomic factors. So at every level of socioeconomic, um, every socioeconomic level, those who ate more fruit and veg had more mental well-being. Um, and, and we get a very different picture with the GHQ. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say on the way through, we did all those um, analyses with the GHQ dichotomized as well, and it was, smoking was the only variable that came out as predictive, and the, it's much more difficult to see any pattern there because you lose so much power. Um, but, but the GHQ was the one that, the smoking was the one that was most closely associated with the GHQ with mental, poor mental health. Um, and we did some, get a little bit of fruit and veg coming through. Now, um, I think those findings are, um, well, they're, they're a kind of starting point. I mean, they don't, um, uh, I, oh, sorry, on the way through, yeah. I, I think the fact we didn't find an association with alcohol mm -hmm. and physical activity, and indeed with particularly yeah. these two, uh, is likely to be something to do with the way the variables were measured in the survey. Um, and we also have this issue of covariance between the different lifestyle factors. If you put them all into a model, the ones that are less strong are going to drop out. That doesn't mean to say that they're, they're unimportant. So uh, just a little reflecting on those findings. Um, it would be very nice to come away and conclude that we've got marvelous evidence that all you need to do to improve your improve mental well-being is eat more fruit and veg. And, and that, would, you know, that would be very good, wouldn't it? Um, it may well be that these findings are borne out in longitudinal surveys. Um, and I, you know, what, what we've said is it's very important to start looking and to see whether that is the case. At the moment, all you can say is that these two things are very closely associated and we don't as yet know in which direction. Thank you very much. <laughs>